So as you can see, the level is quite basic in functionality. The player can interact with the object by picking it up or pushing it about. You can also change the ball material type with the E key, which switches the model material of the synthesizer in Max. If the user is looking at the ball, they can also use their mouse wheel to scale the object. If you find it difficult to properly locate the ball when it's scaled to quite a small size, you can press Z and it'll show you the trace that's being used to detect whether you're looking at the ball or not. You might also hear that when the object is struck softly, the synthesized sound is dampened. Uh, this will be something that's discussed a little bit more in detail in the Max Patch walkthrough. The sound of the object rolling can also be heard, however, as there's some distance attenuation, if you'd like to trigger the rolling sounds manually, you can pick up the ball and look around with it in hand. This allows dynamic control of the rolling sound as you can emulate what it would sound like if the object was grinding against the surface. And with that brief demo over, we'll now take a look at the Emax patch. So it's worth noting here before we get started that I'm using the standalone version of this patch. The synthesizer makes use of modal synthesis to create its sound. This is achieved by using resonant bandpass filters to emulate the individual sinusoidal frequency components that make up a sound. So to create a model, we have to set three variables for each resonant peak. These are the frequency of the filter, the gain, and the decay. We can see from the GUI that the glass and wood models both make use of five resonant peaks to produce their model. So this is 15 variables per model, whereas the more inharmonic metal model, a total of 15 peaks or 45 total variables had to be calculated to produce convincing results. Below the filter values, we can see the variables entered from the Unreal level. First, we have the object size. This controls the fundamental frequency of the model. So as you can see, as I change the object size, the frequency of the models are shifted to respond to this. You can also see that decay of each model is raised when the object is shrunk. Next, we have the hit impulse. This is typically set by the game level automatically, but in the standalone version of the patch, this is user adjustable. As you can probably guess, this variable shows how hard the object has collided with the surface. The harder the object hits the surface, the brighter the synthesizer tone, as you can see from the sonogram towards the bottom of the patch. There's also an adjustable roll speed. This variable is controlled by the velocity of the ball, but in this instance, it's again user adjustable. Using this, you can emulate how the ball responds to different rolling velocities, although if you alter the hit impulse to dampen the rolling sound, the object will need to be hit again to update. This is something that's done automatically in the OSC version of the patch. And finally, we have the material selection. This is a simple switch that selects which synthesis engine is gated through to the output as all the models are triggered simultaneously. If we take a look inside the patch, you can see each synthesis engine. These can be broken down into three core parts. In green, we have the core data that builds the model. This is just a bank of numeric data that's used to set the frequency gain and decay of each resonant bandpass filter. The object responsible for the filtering is the resonators object seen below. In short, we take the size and the impulse from the object in the game engine and use it to tune and dampen the model respectively. When the object sends a hit trigger into max, the resonator object is sent an impulse to purely generate the bandpass tones. To get the material sonic fingerprint, and by fingerprint here, I mean the relationship between resonant frequencies that makes glass sound like glass, a sample of the respective material was analysed and the core frequency and amplitude components were charted. These values are then replicated within the resonators objects and are exponentially scaled with the virtual object size value. To the left in the red box we have the impact noise. This is a noise burst that's triggered when the object detects a hit. This noise burst is run through the same resonator object to inherit the material's sonic characteristics. This burst is used to add an element of randomness to each impact as the resonators by themselves sounded too pure and harmonic. And finally, to the right of each synth voice in the teal or aqua box, uh, we have the rolling noise generation. This works in a similar fashion to the impact noise burst, but instead of triggering when the object detects a hit, the noise is only allowed through when the object is moving. The amplitude of this rolling noise is dictated by the object's speed. The noise also features random amplitude modulation at audio rate to emulate the object rolling over a rough surface. Thanks for watching.